What's up, all you cool cats and kittens? It's on and off the field with Durf and Dylan. What's up, Durf? What's going on there, Dylan? Have you watched Tiger King? Uh, we just started watching it the other day, and we're, like on oh, episode, okay. we're on episode two right now. Like, didn't know if we were going to watch it or not, and then we kind of like, well, everyone else is, and we're all quarantined right now, so let's just watch it. You got nothing better to do. Might as well jump on the jump on the Tiger King train. Yeah, all the cool cats and kittens is always how that beep Carol Baskins uh, starts her starts her YouTube videos. She's always goes, "What's up, all you cool cats and kittens?" Oh, yeah, it's, you're in for a ride. You're only on episode two, man. You yeah, haven't even we gotten got into to... the really good stuff. Yeah, we just got <laughs> past the. We started watching episode two. Before this, I mean, they got like through the incident and everything. So it's uh, it's quite the show. That's what it and seems. Like. Obviously, if you're on social media, you have mm-hmm. you have seen the memes. <laughs> it's the hottest thing in Netflix right now. I'll tell you that. But you are listening to on and off the field. It is March 31st. We're finally almost out of March. Yeah. Saw that famous meme that goes around. It's like, oh, in case anyone's wondering, today's like March 97th. <laughs> One of those months that just never ends. But on and off the field, you can follow on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can get all of those social media links at on and off the field dot com, where you can also read the blog. You can listen to the podcast, get links to the show to your favorite platforms, and then very, very important, write this down: rtfsportsnetwork.com. dot com. I'll say it again: rtfsportsnetwork.com. dot com. Very important link, because there, you'll have to go there to listen to the new live show of On and Off the Field that will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and run to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the RTF Sports Network. A live show, Durf. Isn't that cool? It is so cool. We're going to be live on there, hopefully be able to take phone calls. I'm not sure how to do that yet. We're figuring it out. But we'll definitely be live on Facebook, at least Facebook. Mm -hmm. We'll take questions on Facebook. And then, you know, it's just going to be a show about hanging out with everyone that tunes in. Yeah. We can talk about, because the new airtime for this recorded podcast on the RTS Sports Network is now going to be Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Instead of 4 to 5, it got pushed forward a little bit. So 3 to 4. And then if you listen to that, then tune into the live show. We could just talk about what you just listened to. Or if yeah. you listen to it on Tuesday, like today, if, if you hit it really late at night or on Wednesday, we'll just talk about the show. We can cover things that happened in the past two days. It's just going to be a fun show. I mean, I, there's no reason why this isn't going to be a blast. Absolutely. So since we have the live show, we are mm-hmm. going to push the giveaway until the live show. You thought that'd be more fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Got this weird coughing fit going on right now. I, I'm trying to drown it with beer. I haven't figured it. it hasn't gone away yet. <laughs> but the, the drawing for the giveaway will be on Thursday on the live show from 730 to 830. So be sure to tune in for that. And then one more piece about the RTF Sports Network. If you go to the website, it is April's show of the month time. And on and off the field is in the running for show of the month. So we're up against it right now against a show called Twist. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. We have gained ground uh, in the past. uh, Just today alone, on March 31st, we've gained a lot of ground. Um, We're about 14% behind the leader. Uh, behind twist there's a third guy in there at like one percent we're not too worried about him <laughs> unless i lose by one percent and he has well, it i'm gonna be mad right I'll, I'll find him i'll track him down i will i will uh. i will destroy you um but it, it's just for fun um I, I put a poll out there if we win show of the month uh we'll either you know jump through a table bills mafia style or we'll find a, some charity to donate to a lot of the a lot of the vibes have leaned towards donating to charity, so I think that's the route we're going to go if we win. So make sure you can vote every single day, once a day, until this ends. So just save it to your favorites. Just focus on that. Wake up in the morning, vote. 
you know, just make sure you make that part of your daily routine to vote for your favorite NFL XFL podcast. All righty. I think that's all the news. Did I miss anything? Mm, I think that's all the podcast news for the most part. From, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, Off the top of my head, that's all I got. I think yeah. it's, a, it's a solid recap. Yeah, I'd say so. So we're going to jump into, we got a lot of stuff to cover today. Oh, I, yeah. I know it's it's off season in Corona. <laughs> I mean, how much stuff can there be going on? There is a lot of stuff happening. So we're going to start with the XFL because a slew of XFL players have uh, made it to the NFL now. <coughs> we We talked about a couple of them. The past couple of weeks, because uh, P.J. Walker went, Jordan Tayamu went, um, I believe Donald Parham, our boy Parham, or Parham, as some would call him, <laughs> uh, he made it, I believe, last week. But we're going to cover all of uh, the, the recent ones, at least. Uh, the first one we have listed is a guy that I, I didn't write him down earlier because I wasn't sure, but this guy, he's, he's a defensive player for the Roughnecks, and in the last three games that they played weeks three, four, and five, he basically sealed the game on defense three weeks straight with that clutch interception, I believe, against the Guardians. He had like another, he had picked up two fumbles and call, like, caused a fumble and basically sealed games on defense like, s- like single handedly. It was amazing. Every single time at the end of the game, something crazy happens and they say Marquise Gates, Marquez, Marquise. Linebacker DeMarquise Gates of the Roughnecks. He was all over the place. He's a great player. And to see if he can play how he plays at the end of a game for four quarters in the NFL uh, will be amazing to see if he can help out the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Fred, take it away for whoever you want to pick off the list. Um, yeah, I'll take. Uh, so, uh, defensive tackle. Uh, Kevon Walker from the New York Guardians, who was one of their huge defensive players and just like really stood out in the XFL. Um, he's gonna get a shot to join the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, in just five games with the XFL, he had four and a half sacks, um, nine QB hits. I mean, he was just a he was a force in the XFL, and it's just really good to see. Those those linemen uh, moving up to the NFL, especially Cavon. I mean, he yeah, he was a monster, absolute beast, and I'm so glad he went. He was on one of my original lists of people to make it to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, it's interesting. I, I I he had a strong, maybe it just went with Cardale Jones, but tight end Kahari Lee of the Defenders. He had a strong first week and then kind of disappeared throughout the rest of the season. Yeah. But obviously the offense kind of disappeared as well, so maybe it's not all his fault. Mm-hmm. But he is going to be going to the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, he's going to be playing, a, well, at least trying to make a roster spot to play alongside of the newly acquired, um, boy, oh boy, the Baltimore Raven there, Hayden Hurst, to help fill the void of uh, Austin okay. Hooper leaving, trying to find maybe tight end by committee because that's a that's a big piece to to miss there with Austin Hooper but they're going to try and fill the gap with a XFL player. Yeah. Go ahead for so, your next one. We'll kind of right. do like a a switch back and forth. I think that'd be fun. All right. Yeah. Then I can cough in the meantime. There you go. <laughs> so uh going back to the Guardians again, uh offensive lineman uh I'm going to say it wrong. Jerron Jones. Um, he is also going to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, you're going to kind of notice a little bit of a trend here, all these names. So uh, just keep listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then right there with the next one, safety Tyree Kinnell of the Defenders is also heading to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he was actually in the NFL before. He was with the Bengals before he headed to the XFL after he got a, didn't quite make a roster spot. But he is making his glorious return, and he'll try and make an already very impressive Pittsburgh Steelers defense more impressive. Yeah. Uh, all right, so next we have on the list is uh, tight end Donald Parham from the Renegades. 
Uh, it's Parham. He, Parham. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to join the Los Angeles Chargers um, with uh, was it Hunter Henry out there. So yeah, be, yeah. Uh, if he's out there, yeah. <laughs> so that's good for him to kind of get that breakout and then uh, move up. Yeah, he's just such a he's so he's not athletic. He's very raw. He has raw talent, and he's mm-hmm. just so big and physical, and he's fast for how big he is and how fast he is. Right, he could be a great tight end in the NFL, but he just has to work on some technique stuff, work on his hands, but that's what the NFL is for and for spring training, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, well, hopefully he, he comes around to that side of it. Big fan of Parham. Long snapper Nick Moore of the Vipers is heading to the Baltimore Ravens. Mark Tressman, the former Ravens offensive coordinator and Tampa Bay Vipers head coach. So, you know, he's kind of he, you know, the sticking around there. the Mark Tressman grounds. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so linebacker slash long snapper Christian Kuntz uh, from the Renegades is joining. You guessed it, the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> so he's gonna uh, he's a dual threat um, athlete for them. I'm sure he'll see a lot of special teams play, um, but he's a linebacker that turned into a long snapper in the XFL. Uh, it'd be interesting to see which position he plays or helps out with, but I'm sure the Steelers are just uh, excited to have that kind of dual threat athlete on their team. That would be interesting, yeah, especially on special teams. Stamp yeah. it to the punter, then you can run downfield and be the physical tackler that you are with your linebacking skills. That'd yeah. It would be interesting. And then linebacker Edmund Robinson of the Roughnecks is heading to the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not entirely familiar with Edmund Robinson, but he was on the rough neck, so he must have had some kind of talent. So yeah. he'll be joining his uh, uh, not counterpart, but his uh, XFL friend Kahari Lee in Atlanta. Yeah. All right, and finally we have defensive end Dwayne Hendricks from the St. Louis BattleHawks going to dun, 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 the Pittsburgh Steelers. Shocker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hendricks is a University of Pittsburgh grad, uh, and he's heading back to the city of Pittsburgh, so I'm sure he's very happy about that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I wonder if his family's around that area, too. I mm-hmm. mean, just let's just round it out. Just big Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you did the math, that's five XFL players that the Steelers have signed. Five. I, I don't know if the Steelers just love the grittiness of the XFL or they really like their talent that much. Mm. <laughs> it'll be It's interesting to see how it'll pan out. I'm sure not all five of them will make it. Maybe they'll sign even more. Who knows? Yeah. But I, it's just great to see that all these XFL players had the opportunity to make it to the X, NFL at least and be on a 90-man roster at least. Right. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Let's see how we're doing on time. Eh, not not great. <laughs> Isn't that normally how this, this show goes? Oh, if pretty you've been much. a long time listener of the <laughs> on and off the field family here, uh, we we struggle with time frames a um, little bit. <laughs> we no, we get normally get to the end. and We're like, all right, we got to power through. It's just <laughs> let's just get through this here because we're yeah. gonna run out of time. But we're gonna get better. At yeah. some point in our lives, I don't, I don't know where the time needs to come from, mm. but uh, we're gonna figure it out. I promise. <laughs> but we will take our first break right now, uh, so we shall be right back with on off the field with Durf and Dylan. And welcome back to On Off the Field with Durf and Dylan. Covered some XFL stuff there in the first segment. And now we're going to jump into the NFL. You got some free agency news. Not crazy exciting. We got some playoff stuff. We got some other exciting things a little bit off the field. Uh, action, not, not charity off the field, but some interesting things going on off the field. So we got uh, wide receiver Demarcus Robinson. Resigning with the Chiefs on a very, 
very team friendly deal yeah. of one year <laughs> with two point three million dollars. My goodness, this dude! I don't, he didn't participate as much as say Travis Kelsey or Tyree Kill, and he's not a home run kind of wide receiver. But mm-hmm. just the fact that you get to keep one of your wide receivers from your Super Bowl season and come back on a one year deal for two point three million. This is this is absolutely a team that's just dedicated to re- winning back to back Super Bowls. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and especially since you got Patrick Mahomes' contract coming around the corner. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you win a Super Bowl this year, and then you know Demarcus wants to re-sign again, like, well, it's one year. We got to pay Patrick Mahomes. We got to make cuts. I mean, you're not tied to Demarcus Robinson for two years when you got to pay your quarterback. Ten million dollars or ten trillion dollars, I should say. <laughs> ten million is like a big number, but not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and ten ten billion dollars, uh, more like it. Yeah, there you uh, go. It's a very team friendly deal, and uh, hopefully they'll win back to backs. We'll see what happens. At least that's what they're hoping for. Oh yeah. Long time Denver Bronco Derek Wolf, defensive lineman, kind of edge rush. You know, like very versatile guy can. Can play all the defensive line spots. Uh, Derek Wolf will be joining the Ravens on a one-year deal with three million guaranteed and three million extra with you know the fancy little incentives there. Basically, they had to get this done because their deal with defensive tackle Michael Brockers of the Rams fell through. I don't know if Brockers just didn't accept the deal. Uh, it was a physical kind of thing. They just. It just didn't happen, and Brockers yeah. head back to the Rams, and instead of Brockers, they get Derek Wolf. Yeah, so the, the Ravens the still win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got a guy. Yeah, defensive definitely. line gets a little bit better. <laughs> and didn't the Ravens pick up? Uh, aren't they ones that got Clayus Campbell as well? Yeah, yeah, they did the trade for Clayus Campbell. Well, they we say trade. Well, but it was yeah. more like a highway robbery. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of the situation the Jags are in right now. They right, really they're care. just kind of, here, take it. <laughs> yeah, this guy's making making too much money for our roster. Get out of here. Craziness. So the Ravens are bolstering that defensive line, which is what they really, really needed. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you wanted to talk about a weak spot, that'd be one of them, along with mm-hmm. their wide receiving core, which they lost Seth Roberts during the week, too, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. They did lose Seth Roberts to maybe Carolina. So they haven't signed any wide receivers yet. I don't know what their plan at wide receiver is. Um, Maybe just draft all of them. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) It's definitely going to be an interesting offseason for the Ravens because they can't go and they cannot go into this next season without without picking up a couple more wide receivers because they have none right now. Right. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of wide receivers, yeah. Geronimo Allison is leaving the Packers to play for the Lions on an even more team-friendly right? deal <laughs> of one year, $910,000 plus a 137500 uh, signing bonus. He's barely making over a mil. How right. often do you hear, especially Geronimo Allison, he's like a number three sliding into a number four receiver spot for the Packers. Yeah. And he's making under a mil, almost under a mil. Like that, that has to be <laughs> like the veteran player sign minimum. That it has have. to be pretty close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I thought Geronimo, you know. Maybe I just like his name, so I pay attention yeah, to him a little bit more. Right. <laughs> but I always thought he was a decent guy. Like, I thought, man, Macon just, we'll just say it, basically veteran minimum. That's that's yeah. kind of crazy, in my opinion. But Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the Lions need threats, and uh, they had one here. Yeah. It's, it's not terrible. I don't even know what they're spending their money on, honestly. They already got rid of Darius Slay, <laughs> who went to the Eagles, and they got – they got Darius Slay, paid him a bunch of money, so they had to dump somebody. They dumped Malcolm Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Malcolm Jen- Jenkins headed to the Saints to reunite there, and they had to dump Ronald Darby as well. 
Uh, he is going to join the Redskins on a one-year deal Eagles, for three yeah. million, maxing out at four. Yeah. <laughs> so Eagles yeah. secondary gained a great player, but lost a couple too. Oh yeah. They definitely need the help. Darius Slay will give it to them. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, a guy named Jalen Mills is supposed to take over from Malcolm Jenkins. That's <laughs> that's that's not that, that's like a guy named Trey Flowers taking over for Richard Sherman. It's <laughs> it, it's it's a hard transition, <laughs> right? <laughs> to go from Malcolm Jenkins to basically anybody else. <laughs> oh, but that's um. It's a lot of the free agency news. It's starting to wind down as it does every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in week two, kind of like week three ish of free agency. Things start to you know, kind of quiet a little bit and salary caps start to settle in. The people start to sign their own guys, mm-hmm. bring in a couple more free agents. People are, people are just starting to cut people now because there's not many trades going on. <clears throat> and that's uh, at least the case with the Seahawks as they release Tedrick Thompson and Ed Dixon off of their rosters today. To free up roughly, I think they 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 freed up somewhere like six million dollars in cap space for the coming season. Nice An indication of trying to get a deal done with Clowney, maybe. Yeah, they, yeah. they need it done. Oh, they definitely do. <laughs> the Seahawks, that their pass rush was worse than the Dolphins, who didn't have a team last year. Oof, that's not good. I mean, the pass rush was non-existent, and even with Clowney on the field, sometimes he just wasn't healthy. Right. This he has an off season to get healthy right now, and mm-hmm. and if if Clowney doesn't work out, the Seahawks are tied to uh, Everson Griffin right now as a favorite to land him, if the Clowney deal does not get done, and with the cap space that the Seahawks have, there's in my mind no possible way they bring in both. Right. Yeah. <laughs> in my there's a couple I've seen the scenarios. Seahawks are my team. I've seen some scenarios where if they drop a certain player here and there, uh, if Russell wanted to work around with his contract, they might be able to bring both in. But mm-hmm. that's it's just one of those scenarios where you look at it, you're like, nah, there's just no way that would happen. If it happened, it would be absolutely insane. We'll put it right. that way. Yeah. <laughs> but they already brought Bruce Irvin in. I don't mm-hmm. think they need Griffin if they keep Clowney. So it's, it's one or the other at this point. Yeah. So with the CBA passing, uh, the NFL has made it official. Uh, with the, they also said the 2020 season is supposed to start on time. That is what they said. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. <coughs> nobody, nobody knows for sure what's going to happen with all the with the Rona. Um, but right now, the playoff field is being expanded for this coming season to seven teams per conference. Uh, Fred, you want? Take over here. These uh, you, you right. did a good job researching these uh, <laughs> this uh, this playoff field expansion stuff because I saw none of it. Yeah, so uh, expand to the seventeen was uh, voted by the owners today. Um, if you were to look at all the potential seven seeds um, from nineteen ninety, when what the last time the NFL expanded their playoff uh, numbers. Uh, 44 out of 60 teams had winning records that would have made the playoffs. So it's kind of on, you're kind of getting the more uh, winning record teams um, in that playoff scenario for the NFL, which I think is good for them. Um, If you compare the 14 teams uh, in the league uh, and as a percentage uh, against the four or the, against the other three major leagues, um, uh, NFL is at 43.7% uh, with the 14 out of 32. Uh, MLB is at 33.3%, um, 10 out of 30. And the NHL is actually 61, 16 out of 31. Um, that's probably going to change to 32. I would assume soon with uh, the announcement of some expansion teams. At Seattle 50, Kraken, baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, so the NHL is at 51.6%. And then the actual, the highest percentage um, of teams in the league's playoff is actually the NBA at 53.3% or 16 out of 30 teams. Um, So I think it's just going to, you're going to get more of that. You're going to get a bigger pool of everything. Um, And then with this seven team or the seventh seed 
uh, expansion in each conference. The number one seed is the only team that gets the bye. Um, I did see an, in an article earlier today that um, I think it was nine times out of ten in the last ten years, the team that had the bye week uh, on the old 12-team playoffs um, was more likely to was in the Super Bowl uh, or appeared in the Super Bowl. Um, I think the only team that wasn't in there was that didn't have the bye was the 2012 Baltimore Ravens. So mm-hmm. that that game, that team getting that bye week is critical. Yeah, I feel like that's always been a stat. I mean, that bye week is it's just a huge difference because you got you get the bye week along with home field advantage for at least one playoff game. Right. Yeah. So. Uh... Uh, also, with these uh, extra seeds um, on the playoff field, that that creates is extra games for Wild Card Weekend. Um, it was announced today that CBS and NBC will be getting the extra games on Wild Card Weekend because um, now there'll be six games instead of four. Um, and some interesting facts here is that CBS's extra game will also be carried live stream on CBS All Access. Um, they're streaming provider as well as Nickelodeon to tailor to a younger audience to get Get out of the way Spongebob we got a wild card (laughs) game on let's go (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and then NBC um besides on their regular NBC channel um will air on their new streaming service Peacock and (laughs) Telemundo as well it took me a while to understand why it was called Peacock, but then I remembered that, like, NBC, <laughs> like, yeah, okay, that it makes sense now. I understand. Right. <laughs> it took me a second. Yeah. And Telemundo. Telemundo. You know, the, the, what do they call those those uh, soap operas <laughs> for uh, the Spanish soap operas? All right, uh, going to yeah. take over some of those. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got football on. Let's go. That's All more right. important than anything. <laughs> um, I and I did see just just today, like almost before we just started recording, mm-hmm. the NFL 2020 season uh, schedule. They're going to be releasing the dates uh, around May 9th. We're looking at we're looking at May 9th uh, for the the release time. We'll see. If they have to renounce, if they announce it sooner, but I don't think they're going to go any later. Who knows what happens with the Rona? Mm-hmm. Anything can happen, but hopefully nothing happens. Hopefully this is all done and set over with before the season gets here. We know the draft is going to happen. That's a fact. Yeah, uh, Roger Goodell was very, very steadfast on the fact that the draft will happen as scheduled, like normal. They're just going to be doing it basically as a TV service, and that's it. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I I found it interesting with the percentage of the of the playoff teams really quickly. It's something I've always wondered about was um the fact that you always want worry about when you ex- expand playoffs about watering down of the regular season. But the NFL did a great job where only the number one seed is going to be getting the bye week, so you, everyone's gunning for that. Right. So. Yeah. It, it, you can't not care about the regular season. Yeah, now there's seven teams, but you're going to be playing in Wild Card Weekend. Six teams will instead of just four. So you have to go gun for that number one. It makes you play to the last game. And I think they just handled that really well, personally. I, I right. my my fair opinion. Oh, I know. I totally agree with you. I think it's uh, I can only see it improving competition in the NFL, yeah. making it a better experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take our second break. We're going to come back and finish up the news, and we're going to jump into our main segment of uh, On and Off the Field with Durf and Dylan right after this. And welcome back again to On and Off the Field with Durf and Dylan. We just covered some NFL news. We're going to finish up the NFL news real quick. In Tampa Bay, they have a new quarterback. And a lot of people call this quarterback, and he has a company, a trademark, of TB12. So you would have thought 
he's just going to go to Tampa Bay and be number 12, right? Well, <laughs> a wide receiver called Chris, Chris Godwin was already wearing number 12. And he said, hey, I really like this number. Uh-oh. Controversy. <laughs> I, I, I would only assume this came to fisticuffs at some point. I can imagine that Chris Godwin and Tom Brady met up and had to fight for number 12. Some fisticuffs. And the winner. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're going at it. And they're, it has been decided yeah. officially yep. that Tom Brady will remain TB12. Yay! <laughs> applause. <laughs> We all knew he was going to get it. Yeah. Let's not act like we didn't. Like Tom Brady could have just – Tom Brady could have got Chris Godwin cut off the team if he wanted to, <laughs> just to get to number 12. I'm sure he would have done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so he has number 12. Chris Godwin will move to number 14. And just so everyone is on the same page, Antonio Brown will have no number on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> just so everyone is clear, oh, Bruce yeah. Arians has made it very clear that – AB will not be in Tampa Bay. And just really quickly, I had to throw this out there. AB came out and said he is better than Julio Jones. Opinion on that, Durf? Do you, do you have an opinion on that? I think he needs to rethink his statements. Because <laughs> that's completely false. I mean, A B is a really good talent. I mean, he was he was having Hall of Fame numbers the early part of his career. He was electric. You cannot deny he was a great wide receiver. But that's not the point. Right. <laughs> the point is you took your career and nosedived it because you're a dummy. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. Yeah. <laughs> you are not better than Julio <laughs> strictly because you are out of the league right now. There we go. That is settled. But that is our news segment of the NFL. So last week we did uh, power rankings for all the NFL teams based off of defense. Oh, boy. See, now I'm not even in audacity, and I can't even cut that out. It's just going to be what happens. <laughs> last week we did it on quarterbacks. Yeah, there we go. In their quarterback depth chart, basically, and you know if they had a decent backup, decent starter. Uh, this week, you guessed it, we're doing power rankings based off of the offensive line. No, I'm just kidding. We're doing it based <laughs> off of defense. So we have a list here. Uh, Durf actually put this together for me because he is amazing. We have defensive power rankings uh, going into the season, along with their best playmaker uh, statistically and just like kind of the leader of that defense who they kind of build around for that defense so we're gonna start out at number one <laughs> the new england patriots they are a solid team yeah uh, they're led by stefan gilmore uh cornerback obviously defensive player of the year just absolutely shut down did he even have a, a touchdown scored on him in this season? Uh, depends if you count the John Brown one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. he kind of he. Did, I would blame him for that. He, it might not have been his assignment after he cut over the field, but he got juked. Right, like <laughs> the whole meme of John Brown practicing social, social distancing before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was probably one of the Steph, Stephon Gilmore's lesser moments, right. but. Um, <laughs> He's still going to be spearheading that defense. And the Patriots did lose a lot of pieces in this offseason, especially in their linebacking core. They lost three out of their four starting linebackers. That is uh, that's going to be tough to overcome for this season. Mm -hmm. But if any team, any coach can put a defense together, it would, uh, I think it would be Bill Belichick. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, so number two. Uh, we have the runner-up to the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers, with Eric Armstead, defensive end, as being their playmaker. And he clearly showed it with his contract this offseason. 
and they just they have a really really great team right now and that's a that's a defense to worry about for at least a few years yeah and the seahawks have to deal with it twice a year (laughs) that's really fun along with aaron donald (laughs) with with the rams it's so much fun no i'm sure (laughs) and what do they have nick or joey they have nick bosa right yes yep i mean he's just a a beast Oh yeah, he, he had the. Was yeah. it against the game against the Browns? He just went off. Oh, it yeah. seemed like every play he was just he was hitting Baker. Yeah, it was it was insanity. He, so with Eric on one side and and Nick on the other, that is a very deadly front seven along with their linebacking core. I can't name all of them right now off the top of my head, mm-hmm. but I mean it, it's one of the better front sevens in football oh, without a doubt definitely but if there's one team that could possibly uh counter the san francisco's front seven with their own front seven it would be the buffalo bills i think yeah and i will absolutely let you take over on the buffalo bills <laughs> i'm not going to try and pretend like i'm going to talk about the buffalo bills <laughs> when i got a super fan right here <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, uh, that Sean McDermott Leslie Frazier defense was definitely has just time and time again the past couple of years shown that they're just a really well run unit. Um, so when I had to, was making the playmaker choice for the Buffalo Bills, I really had I really struggled with this one. Um, I think the the big name that I would go with uh, would be Tre'Davious White. Um, he's any day now, he should be getting a big contract from them, um, which is well deserved. Uh, but he's definitely been like an absolute shutdown corner for the Bills. Like great draft pick from that. Um, but I think a little bit of up and coming though is definitely Tremaine Edmonds, um, and in that linebacker linebacker core, um, it's just a. I think it's just a great overall, great unit for. Uh, uh, Bill's defense there. Yeah, and it was it was a staple of that team. Yeah, I mean, especially when the Bills started, when they got into the playoffs, mm-hmm. everyone's talking about the defense. You can talk about John Brown, Cole Be- Beasley, and um, a couple of guys on offense, but it always came back to the defense that the, that you were talking about. Yeah, and it it really is an amazing defense. That's why they're at number three. Yeah, at number four. We have the Baltimore Ravens. We talked about a little bit earlier, getting a couple of uh, trades in with Calais Campbell and Derek Wolf coming in to shore up that front seven, that at least that pass rush, and the and the a little bit of a run stuffing game with there with Calais. But they also have Earl Thomas in the back, and you cannot ask for a better quarterback of your defense yeah. than Earl Thomas. I, I miss him every day <laughs> in Seattle. <laughs> It was a, it was a very rough departure with the whole flipping off Pete Carroll and right? <laughs> just it was just an ugly way to go out yeah. of Seattle for Earl. But you cannot deny this man's talent if he can stay healthy. Absolutely. He's a he's a beast. He knows everything that's going on. He can run side sideline to sideline in a blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. Ama- just amazing, amazing free safety. Yeah, and he does a great job of leading that defense over there. And I also believe they are the ones that have uh, Marcus Peters as well. Yeah. Some people, some people don't like Marcus Peters, and I understand it. Mm-hmm. He's he's maybe he's a little overrated at times, but still a great corner. Maybe not shut down, but mm-hmm. a great CB one to have over there. Oh, definitely. So then at number five, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not only because they drafted or they signed so many XFL players on defense, <laughs> but they also have TJ Watt, the younger brother of JJ Watt. Um, technically, he's outside linebacker. He plays a lot of defensive ends positions or during the game, um, but you can just tell they are going to build around this guy. Like he's he's going to be that focal point for many years to come on this team. Um, a little side, I like couldn't decide between T.J. Watt or Bud Dupree when I was looking at stats here, because Bud Dupree's had a really good season as well. But I think T.J. Watt's going to be the guy that they're going to lean on more because he's the younger, younger player. 
Yeah, Bud Dupree just got his contract too. Yeah. Which um or he didn't get the contract, he got the franchise tag, but he will get his contract. Right. He had an amazing season. Uh, I was I looked up his stats when he did get tagged and mm-hmm. yeah, it's just he's an absolute beast. So but I definitely won't disagree with TJ Watt. Uh, amazing draft pick there as well for the Steelers. And now they also have on, on offense another Watt. So all they're missing yeah. is JJ Watt. They have uh, Derek Watt, the fullback now. Yeah. I bet they got to complete the trifecta. I bet it happens. <laughs> I, I, could you imagine? He, That'd be the most insane thing ever. Oh, yeah. TJ Watt and JJ Watt rushing the passer. That'd be sweet. That would but be. JJ Watt will probably die before he makes another team. <laughs> get injured again. Or at least get <laughs> crippled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So, number six. Kind of a shocker, maybe. Maybe you don't, maybe you're uh, kind of questioning this one. But if you really look at it, the Los Angeles Chargers have an amazing defense. Casey Hayward back there. Yep. They got a couple of free agents to come in. Um, a couple, I, I don't know all the names off the top of my head that they picked up, but they have a great defense. And they had a great defense last year. If you remember their first game against the Chiefs, they. They shut down that Chiefs offense. I mean, they did a very good job, and they might have beat them in Mexico if Philip Rivers didn't throw five <laughs> interceptions. Yeah. I mean, it's a great defense, and it's led by another free safety, Derwin James. I was so mad when the Chargers picked Derwin James in the draft <laughs> because the Seahawks were sitting there two more picks away, mm-hmm. and they would have grabbed Derwin James without a doubt. Oh, I'm sure. To replace Earl Thomas or Cam Chancellor? Right. Derwin James is a monster. Great, great player. And I'm mad we don't have him on the Seahawks, but hey, that's where we are. Yeah. And I, I've made my peace with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and number seven. Surprising, but not, it's not as surprising as the uh, the Chargers. But we have the New York Jets. Um, had kind of a rough season, but they uh pretty sound defensive unit there uh with jamal adams at safety for him leading that defense um he's definitely gonna be the guy that they lean on to kind of corral these newer guys i'm sure they're gonna draft on defense and uh kind of help that team get back on its feet but not too much back on its feet because this is the bills time so like jets cool cool your jets they're jets You might be pretty good, but just say not as good. We got things to take care of in Buffalo. <laughs> Number eight, uh, just the complete team that is driven by defense and zero offense is the Chicago Bears, led by somehow they acquired Khalil Mack from the stupid, stupid Raiders, who are still trying to replace Khalil Mack, but they never will. Um, you know, the Chicago Bears have a great defense, and what they had the monsters of Midway thing going mm-hmm. uh, last season when they got Khalil. It it's a it's a really is a great defense all the way around. They're still trying to get rid of Prince of Mukamura, I believe, is still on the roster, but it's a young defense. They got a lot of great pieces. They know how to draft defensively. They just don't know how to draft offensively. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> if they can figure out how to get a team together on oh. offense. This would be a a good team. Oh, definitely. So, number nine, we have the Dallas Cowboys, which has, they've had a pretty good defense the past couple of years. Uh, probably slipped a little bit over the, this last season as compared to previous seasons. Um, but they are led by Jalen Smith, their middle linebacker. Um, they have some great veteran leadership on that defense, too, with Sean Lee there. Um, but Jalen Smith's definitely the guy doing the up and coming. Uh, player for them, so I'm it'd be interesting to see how uh, that works out there. Yeah, they lost Byron Jones, so it'll be interesting to see how much of a a defense they still have back, in, especially in the secondary. Mm-hmm. Concerned about the secondary. Yeah, I'm not too worried about their linebacking core, especially they also have uh, Van Der Esch as well. Oh, yep. So it's a it's a solid uh, linebacking core, but other than that, I, I have question marks. <laughs> right, but. <laughs> The Philadelphia Eagles, led by Fletcher Cox on their stout defensive front. Uh, and they, again, questions at the linebacker spot. Mm-hmm. They have Nick Gary, who is eh, 
he was their leading tackler. He's a good good linebacker, but the rest of them couldn't name him for you. But that front, uh, the front four there, their defensive line is is very good. And they just got done picking up a uh, Javon Hargrave from the Steelers mm-hmm. uh, to play nose tackle. It it's a solid defensive front. Good luck trying to run the ball against them. Uh, you better get rid of the ball quick because they will smother your quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a question mark when you play the Eagles is is how you're going to handle that uh, handle the team up front. If you can get the ball off, they have a secondary you can pick apart. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that front, that front, uh, the winning at the line of scrimmage is how the Eagles win games. Oh, definitely. And so, number eleven, we are looking at the New Orleans Saints. They have just been a complete team overall for so long, but their defense has definitely been helping them more and more. I would say the last couple of years. Um. So I think. My personal opinion, I think their playmaker that's leading that team is Cam Jordan right now um, on, that, on that defensive line. Um, and I know that they picked up some more players um, in their secondary, but uh, I, I think Cam Jordan is their, their leader on that defense. Yeah, that, even just as a personality alone, right? Yeah, <laughs> he's just a he's just a captain. He's a leader among men. Yeah. Great guy and a great talent. So the Denver Broncos at number 12, just kind of sitting there with the Bears, you know. They're still trying to figure out an offense, but the defense, Mm -hmm. very good. Uh, Obviously led by Von Miller, and they have Bradley Chubb. If he can stay healthy, he is another great talent uh, on that that defensive line. It's a a pretty pretty good secondary. Uh, Do they still have Aqib Tlaib? Can we confirm or nor deny that? thought he was at the Rams. Oh, is he now? Nah, eh, who knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it is a pretty solid team all around. Obviously, whenever you hear the Denver Broncos, you think of pass rush, you think of Von Miller, you think of Bradley Chubb. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm always worried about that. But it was a down year last season. They got a new defensive coordinator, and I'm sure this they picked it up near the end of the season, so you saw that it started to click, and I'm sure it'll continue to click uh, coming this season. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we'll get to number 13 here with the Los Angeles Rams and uh, Dylan's favorite defensive tackle to play against, Aaron Donald. Boo. (laughs) Boo this man. (laughs) But, I mean, Aaron Donald has just been uh, an outstanding defensive tackle um, for the Rams, and it's just really unfortunate how they haven't been able just to – quite get it on both sides of the ball for the Rams to get him where he should be um, on that level. But, uh, yeah, Aaron Donald's been carrying that team and that defense for the last few years and don't see it stopping anytime soon. Yeah, just the thing with Aaron is you have to, you have to double team him. I've seen pictures where they triple team him. It's absolutely insane. Right? And yeah. it just, he just frees up. Uh, other pass rushers Mm -hmm. and that's why some of his teammates got big deals at other teams is because hey he played well with the rams he should play well for us that's not the case all the time uh, because aaron donald frees up a lot of uh, pass rush ability for others to get to the quarterback so you know (laughs) we'll see what we'll uh, we'll see what happens with those other guys but aaron donald will continue to be probably the most defensive tackle in the league oh yeah definitely at number 14, the Minnesota Vikings with Denell Hunter. Uh, you know, with Everson Griffin on the market, Denell Hunter's always been a beast. He's just, it's one of those guys. You always you hear the Vikings defense and you're just like, yeah, Hunter. Yeah. Always a constant guy getting to the quarterback. And he's just, you always want a guy who can help seal the edge for run game. He's just got a burst of speed and power. He's got great hand technique. And he can, he just, you can never run to his side of the ball mm-hmm. unless you have someone a second blocker out there. Such a great, such a great defensive end, and that's who I think of when I think of the Vikings. Besides Everson Griffin, but right, uh, I, I'm not sure who else they really have. <laughs> uh, they did tag their very talented safety, I believe, this year, uh, Anthony Harris. But oh, yep. yeah, Hunter, yeah. Hunter for sure is uh, the leader, leader there. Oh, definitely. Oh, number fifteen, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Shaq Barrett as their playmaker. And I think just the 
the state breakout season this guy had last year. Um, the Buccaneers have seen that, and they are going to ride that train until it goes off the tracks, basically. Um, but he's just he's been a force there with the Namak and Sue on the inside, um, kind of helping get the pressure off him a little, of Barrett a little bit. But Barrett's definitely just kind of just been a playmaker for the Buccaneers, and it'll be inter- interesting to see. Um, how much that defense improves um, with Brady on the other side there. I mean, that let that defense loose. They played real that, especially the whole front seven played amazing football last year. Yeah. Secondary question marks. Offense was a huge question mark last year. Right. I have high hope for the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. People are hating on them. <laughs> I, I think all they need is a good quarterback and they got one. And obviously with hall of famer, uh, future hall of famer, Tom Brady. Number 16, the Indianapolis Colts with Darius Leonard. What a linebacker. Uh, He's just just a beast. Comes in, uh, doesn't even play a full season, and he leads the league in tackles. I mean, that's all you need to know. Right, yeah. If a guy misses a couple games, what did he miss? I think, did he miss the first four games? It was just two games. Oh, I I do not remember off the top of my head. I don't remember. But he ended up leading the league in tackles that season. It's ins- he's just complete insanity, yeah. and he's still on a rookie contract. Yep. Do one of the better young linebackers in the game, without a doubt. And the Colts have a great talent there to lead them into the future. And then they also were able to get DeForest Buckner, mm-hmm. Buckner from the Forty ers to help rush pass rush as well. So they have a good foundation for a defense. But they're about smack dab in the middle of the power rankings here. They definitely have a couple of holes to fill, especially in the secondary. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, number 17 is your Super Bowl champions, uh, Kansas City Chiefs, um, with Chris Jones on the defensive line, kind of leading that defense. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but Chris Jones got the franchise tag this year? Yes, he did. I thought, yeah. So they they clearly know he's a, a great asset to have on that team. Um. Secondary is back later with Tyron Matthews is pretty good, but I think Chris Jones in that front on that front line there it just says really what helps that Chiefs defense play is so, so much better. Yeah, that you always need a good strong guy up front, and he's just again I think he's just a leader. I think the whole team looks at him like that. Yeah, and he's just a great guy overall. Oh, definitely. Here comes that time crunch. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do number 18 is the Green Day, Green Bay Packers with Zadarius Smith. Um, he also has his brother there, the other Smith, mm-hmm. um, who are just two very, very good defensive players. And last year they were destroying the quarterback. And you always think of the Packers as a, as a team that has a couple question marks in the secondary and even rushing the passer. passer. And now they lost Blake Martinez. Yep. Uh, that kind of hurts for them. Uh, we'll see what happens with that defense moving forward without Blake in the middle of the field. Uh, also, at number nineteen is the Oakland Raiders with Max Crosby. Uh, he had a great year last season. Um, it, it's just so many, so many question marks with the secondary. Max is obviously, if he would have had an entirety of a season of what he showed, kind of middle near the end of the season, he would have been a defensive rookie of the year candidate. Uh, I think he was still kind of maybe received a vote. Who knows? But great, great young player. Kind of there with Darius Leonard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Going to lead a young defense to a bright future, maybe. Oh, definitely. Oh, number 20, the Atlanta Falcons with uh, <coughs> with Vic Beasley on that defensive end. Um, see how this defense, this defense uh, translates this year. Um, if they can get everyone, if they can get everyone healthy, that's the, probably the key thing here. Um, but we'll see. So number 21, you have the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I chose Logan Ryan, the cornerback for them, as their playmaker. Um, he's just been a, a young, good player for them who has just continued to play well. Um, he's got a bright future there. Fun fact, Vic Beasley is now a Tennessee Titan. Oh, wow. That's some bad, <laughs> that's some bad fact-finding there. <laughs> I was like... 
<laughs> I saw Vic Beasley. I was like, I feel like something happened to Vic this year. I don't remember what it was. I, I Googled it real quick. Oh, I was like, ah. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's nobody else good over there anyway. So. <laughs> the, Falcons. The, the Falcons have a nice young team, <laughs> or a nice young defense, but they have so many injury problems that that's what happened last season. It's just, right. They couldn't even make out a preseason with half of their defense intact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, did Did you do the Titans? Yeah, I did the Titans. <laughs> I was fact checking the the Tennessee Titans are number twenty one with Vic Beasley. <laughs> oh, we're gonna rattle off a couple yeah. here. The Cleveland Browns with Miles Garrett. As long as he's not bashing quarterbacks' heads in with helmets, mm. he is obviously the leader of that defense. Another young defense. Uh, just just a bunch of questions, especially the secondary again. Uh, they lost their two of their linebackers as well. Uh, I, we can talk to our Browns fan friend, yeah. a local Browns fan, who uh, is very upset with one of the losses of his <laughs> linebackers. The Carolina Panthers uh, are, is led by Shaq Thompson, great outside linebacker. I, I don't think I could name you another defensive player since they lost so many in free agency, right. to be completely yeah. honest. Either free, either free agency or retirement, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, Luke Keekley. That's ugh. yeah. I keep, I keep forgetting that's a thing that happened. That sucks. <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars have linebacker Josh Allen. Um, everybody knows that that team's in a complete disarray right now. Mm. <laughs> uh, who knows what's going to happen with them going forward? They're going to be trading their defensive end Nagankwe at some point. Mm-hmm. The New York Giants. Uh, they have Blake Martinez. We already talked about him with the the Packers. He will now be leading that Giants defense. Who. You feel like has potential, especially Leonard Williams up front, but just hasn't p- pieced everything together quite yet. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the Seattle Seahawks are led by Bobby Wagner. Uh, zero pass rush. <laughs> and Shaquille Griffin is a great corner. And they did pick up uh, a couple of good safeties with Bradley McDougal last season and Quandre Diggs this season. But Trey Flowers is a big uh, liability on their side of the field and zero pa- pass rush. Yeah. The Washington Redskins have Landon Collins, a strong, strong safety, very good. Um, but they lost to the Seattle Seahawks, Lance Dunbar. So maybe that helps the Seahawks next season, but definitely hurts the Redskins this season. Take away the rest of the list. All right, 28. You got the Houston Texans with inside linebacker Zach Cunningham. 29, Cincinnati Bengals with defensive end, defensive end Sam Hubbard. Uh, number 30, we're looking at the Tanking Dolphins. Uh, with Jerome Baker as on, at outside linebacker. Uh, 31 is the, the Detroit Lions, a.k.a. Patriots 2.0. Well, now I don't know if that's right. Now I don't know if that player is right. Oh, that's probably wrong. All right. <laughs> so I put Trey Flowers here, but I don't think Trey Flowers is on the team anymore. <laughs> Who knows? Oh. And then finally, <laughs> not, but at least uh, 32 leaves the Arizona Cardinals with – Little known fact, Rochester native Chandler Jones, defensive end. Mm. Good, good, good fact. Yeah. No, the Lions have nobody on defense. They have a bunch of former <laughs> Patriots, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that is all the time we have for on and off the field. We almost made it through our whole list without having to rush, but yeah. we did our best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. I uh, always appreciate everyone being here on all of the field and listening. Make sure you go vote on rtfsportsnetwork.com. And as always, Durf, all hail the Jockstrap King. <laughs>